Hello Internet, welcome to Solace in Cinema's podcast and this is the f- fourth episode. Uh, yep, fourth episode, but we don't have the first episode because we deleted it because of some privacy reasons and it was not in English. We had done the first episode in Nepali because it's our first language, our mother tongue. But we wanted to reach a wider audience, even if there are few. So we decided on conducting our episodes in English. So although my English isn't really that good, uh, and since they say that if you just change the language, when we switch to other, other language, our personality changes as well. But in this case, it doesn't matter because w- in Solace in Cinemas, we'll be just talking about movies. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. So welcome everyone to the fourth episode. And in this episode, I'm very interested and I'm a bit excited to talk about this movie that I just recently saw. And this movie, it's none other than this amazing Japanese movie called Devils. And this movie was released in, sorry, I'm, I'm typing right now because I have to remember something. I can't just say it out loud. It's a podcast. <coughs> sorry. Devils 1972, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's a Japanese movie. Uh, it's a pure drama, but it's uh, it's this movie is a thriller. Mm, it's very Kurosawa, but if it was more darker and more gore elements into it, it's a bit depressing movie. It's a very depressing movie actually. So, so before I tell you about this movie. Uh, if you haven't watched it, and I hope if you listen to it, you can uh, you will be convinced that you have to watch the movie. And this movie, it's something. Uh, if you are used to seeing movies, movies, such amazing Japanese movies such as Yugetsu, uh, Kaiden, or are you, or if you are familiar with uh, some Japanese form of theatrical arts such as Kabuki, uh, I'm not really expert on this subject. But Kabuki is like a stage play and mm, they have this exaggerated makeups on. They perform with this singing way. But in this movie, it isn't kind of a musical. But it's set in sort of old Japanese era. Uh, Edo era. Something like that. Where, you know, those, those sort of era where people just say between their heads due to, to prevent way too much hot due to the weather and all and they wear this uh, traditional Japanese dress because of course the movie is set in those era so you can say that devils uh, the Japanese title of this movie is uh, Sura and they don't even have a Wikipedia page of this movie yet so uh, since it was rele- uh, released in the 70s so and I think Criterion Crit- Collection might be releasing a Blu-ray version of this movie uh, or maybe not I just maybe misread it somewhere but I, I'm sure pr- eventually they release a Criterion version of this movie because it's really good uh, something sort of an art house and the way it's executed in terms of storytelling and I can guarantee you that guarantee you that like if you watch the movie uh, you'll be very absorbed in it like as if you're um, hearing some sort of ghost story or a very mythical tragedy tale from your grandmother in the middle of a night a very silent night that's the thing like uh, if you have a free time like uh, a two and a half hours to spare, just two and fifteen minutes to spare. But you want to be completely absorbed in this very fever dream like uh, atmosphere and this experience as if you're watching a play, like a theatrical play. And with elements of uh, misse scene. So uh, 
Okay, this term called Miss A scene. It's usually used in filmmaking as well. Mostly it's prevalent in theatrical works. I'm not pronouncing it right properly because Miss A scene is something, I think it's a French word. Miss A scene. Mm, miss is. Uh, yep, I got it. Miss M I S E E. Although I'm not sure how often movies use this sort of technique. So it's like this arrangement in a movie or play where it's very dark, but only the person's body and facial expression is highlighted and just the important objects around it. And I don't know if uh, in the case of uh, Devils, Sura, whether this was a limitation or the choice of the director. But this movie had, uh, like, if you want to know the example of uh, Miss A scene, I don't know how to fucking pronounce this thing. But uh, pronounce, pronounce this Miss A is a French, French word. Mm, sorry, my mic doesn't work. I can't hear it because since I've been, I've connected this microphone to this mixer right here I don't have the headphones right now so I know so nevertheless uh, getting back to the movie let me just tell you about the plot of the movie as far as as much as I understood what it's about so first of all mm, Devils is a movie that is extremely violent violent not in a sense it's like an unnecessary violence you know uh, very unnecessary way just to like shock the audience but uh, I mean I don't think there's ever a necessary violence even in the movies or real life but the way the movie this movie demons shows the violent nature within men within a person's heart and whatever like the circumstances that lead them to do these acts so it's a completely black and white movie i think by the 70s there was already color so obviously intentionally black and white because it's kind of artsy movie but i think it's really artsy because if you just look at how the movie has been executed uh, with, the, with the use of flags, flashbacks and the music, it's very uh, hypnotic. This movie is uh, hypnotizing in a way that it's like chilling. In, like People who are not used to you know those kind of movies where they make you very, very uncomfortable and like it's like dark. Then it's very like, real, like, how do you say it in English? sends chills down your spine that sort of thing so yeah it's really it was released in 1970 now i can now i can confirm and the movie was directed by this i haven't really seen much movies of the japanese director the one that i uh, really like this year is the sanso the belief that movie i forgot the name of this amazing director his movies that I saw recently and the, the one who made the, this movie called The Face of Another. Apart from obviously Kurosawa, <coughs> Kurosawa is the starter pack of Japanese movies. But obviously there are so many good Japanese movies. And this this movie right here, Demons, Sura, S-H-U-R-A, you can watch it. Uh, let me say right away that this movie is available to watch on YouTube. I highly recommend you to buy the Blu-ray version. If you are in U.S. or any other country, you can afford it. But if you don't have those sort of privileges, find it on YouTube as long as it's it doesn't get a copyright strike and it gets taken down. So Sura starts off in a dark room. The whole ambience of the movie is like you are an audience in a dark theater and everything takes place in a very dreamy kind of state. So what happens in the movie is that there is this uh, ronin, like a samurai. In those ages, they are were, they were like samurai, kind of high-ranking warrior. And 
he has been sent off from his home and you can see this character just l lingering in this brothel uh, not sure it's a brothel but you know how do you call that uh, they are comp uh, the girls that that give company to men during those previous uh, in japan uh, Mm. What, what, what is the word of that? Not not really a prostitute. Geisa, 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 yeah. G I S S A. They wear this amazing, nice kimono. And he's in love with this geisa. More like uh, in this places, place he has rented, and he has this uh, old guy that takes care of, uh, that like helps him out. The one who calls him master so he's just having this uh, the mov movie starts off with a dream it's just like Lynch but these are like fathers and grandfathers of Lynch because I'm pretty sure these people who are into surrealism those kind of movies that they make they're inspired by these movies the groundwork and the imagery in these movies like mm, premonition the first sort of the movie I really didn't understand the first sort of the movie because there was this lantern chasing this guy, white lanterns, and he just sees so much. There are so many people there around him, and he just wake up in the arms of this beautiful geisha. I don't know who the actress is, but I'm pretty sure I've seen her in most of the Japanese movies. So yeah, he wakes up in her arms. He's just sleeping with her, and the guy from his family gets sent uh, his family members send him ry oreo gold like lots of tons of money but in that time they like converted into gold and valued some sort of something like that i'm sorry i'm, I'm not a major in history or i don't really know about japanese history much so but the thing is he gets sent tons of money while he's still with this geisha the man who consider him as a master, he comes to give him the money. And then he has this caretaker, this kind of guy. He carries around with him, this Ronin, our main lead guy. And what happens is that his family has sent the money in a very, by doing a lot of hardship, they have sell, sold their land. So they get a clue of this, the Geisa and the other guy who takes care of this Ronin. So they devise a plan. We'll we find this later on in the movie, but she uh, she turns out to be in a lot of debt. She's in a lot of debt, and and he's mm, you know what? Like I don't really feel like talking about the plot of the movie at all because it's hard. It's easy, but it's not that easy as well. You just have to watch the movie to experience it. So the core of the movie is that he gets cheated on in a really, really bad way to the point that he loses trust in everyone around him because this Geisa, he, Geisa and the care, his caretaker, the simple plot of the movie is that he gets duped, like he gets ripped off by a bunch of people, especially these two people who are husband and wife. For their own reasons, they, uh, they cheat him like, they just take away all of his money and the money that's, that has been sent by his parents or family members to restore his honor and career in the samurai and what happens is that they take away all his money but not forcefully in a they make a scheme that makes him like give the money by himself for because he's in love with this beautiful geisha and turns out that this Gesa is the wife of his caretaker, this young guy. So what happens later on in the movie? He feels very much betrayed, and he come. Uh, he starts to murder murder people who are associated with this scheme to like rob him. And then what happens is then, sorry, like. It's afternoon right here, so I have to speak not so much loudly because I'm. It's afternoon. 
Mm. So yeah, what I, what I was saying was he gets um, robbed and he just runs away to just kill all the people associated with the way those who have taken his money by making this very clever scheme but really immoral. And then what happens at the end is that he manages to kill every each and one of those people that have robbed him of his gold. But it gets very much darker in the end like in you know this thing called character development in the movie like unexpected twists and turns that's what happens in the movie actually and at the uh, it's very nihilistic in a way you know like uh, the way the director writer and the maker that have approached this movie so mm, there isn't like a climax where things turn out turn out to be good mm. so I'll so now I have just t- given you some of the plots of the movie, right? <coughs> but uh, in a surface, the plot might seem like very simple. Simple plot, like the guy gets robbed, he gets his revenge. But the thing about this movie that makes it so nice, beautiful and different is the way it's shot. I don't know how they shoot this movie. Or if they are able to make this, or if sh- this was a limitation on those times, it's so quiet in the movie. You can just hear the dialogues. It's just like a silent night, so fucking silent, and you just get absorbed in the atmosphere. And this main character, while there are these things happening around him, uh, uh, his psychological uh, state is portrayed in like many moments of the movie. Like he, uh, when he's about to like make such a bad decision, there's this um, point in the movie like there's this uh, alternative reality. He starts thinking about uh, what what if I do this and this happens, and then that thing is so the alternative scenario is shown, and then he acts on it but in a different way. And one of the most beautiful moment from this movie that I that for me I think. I mean, so many movies, so many beautiful shots and moments from those movies from all over the world. So yesterday while I watched this movie, there had this one shot towards the end of the movie, like towards the third act of the movie. So this the guy, our main lead guy, I don't know the name of the character, sorry, I can't remember. But it's Sinorio or something like that. So he goes there and... He goes, uh, so all he has killed all the rem- members, uh, most of the members who just cheated, uh, who just duped him of his money, who just stole all his money, right? So just all the husband and wife and their little kid, like a small infant kid is left. And he just pretends like he, does, he doesn't hold any grudges against the two of them. And tells them that he wants to have sake with them. Sake is like a traditional Japanese wine. He's still drink, drink, drunk to, um, drink today. So I really want to try sake though. So this guy, is, uh, he wants her to play this instrument, like sing a song for her like he, like she used to when he was her customer, right, in the inn. And she plays this intro, uh, instrument. Let me just uh, let me just search the name of the in- this Japanese instrument. It's like a guitar, but like only three, four chord, uh, not chords, strings on it. Instrument that Gaisa. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce Gaisa either. Gaisa plays. What's the name of the instrument? Yeah, Samisen. It's, it has very thin, like a handle. It's like a box. See, tiffin box kind of but it's a beautiful and she plays it so beautifully it, it isn't something yeah the music choice of the movie as well like in Yugetsu you see this soundtrack they use traditional Japanese flute and it's very airy kind of feeling and you get this whole creepy vibe but also beautiful in most most of the ghost uh, old ghost Japanese movies right but it's a drama movie it's a thriller movie it's like a revenge story but 
kind of in a perspective like oh look at the mind mankind like hell is like the hell is right here that kind of so this is like the most beautiful moment for me in this movie was when the guests are placed this intru- instrumental sami sen uh, for for our lead guy of course in front of her husband and they were terrified like he was about he might because he also had intentions to kill them both but since he says he doesn't want to they are kind of afraid but also want to show him like their gratitude like like a guest so she plays this beautiful song i'll give it a listen another time as well and i think by the time i have edited this uh, episode i'll put the clip uh, the clip will be playing even uh, playing without sound of course due to copyright reasons and she plays the sound uh, plays the instrument and sings so beautifully and at that moment what happens is that uh, uh, the visual cuts to the moment when they first uh, started having intimate relations right it cuts to the moment they have sex and this samurai our main guy ronin he just closes his eye at that moment and just thinks about the time they were just in his other arms and making love uh, for him i think the main driving point in the movie the horrible acts he commits by the end of the movie is all due to his love for this beautiful geisha and the acts he does the f- this heinous immoral acts he does is because of the betrayal this unbelievable betrayal he faces for the first time in his life and he says this in a lot of moments in the movie through his beautiful dialogues and i don't know how well i can convince or i can uh, you know share with you all that this movie is beautiful and it's a rare movie a rare kind of experience i might say that uh we really rarely we have this sort of experience while mo- watching movies these days unless it's a really good movie right there are some movie that are for the entertainment purposes some sort of movie that are informational but this movie it's not just about the uh how do you say you don't like it doesn't really have a message as well and i don't really think the director let me just say the name of the director so i don't really forget it eh? mm-hmm. demon sura this another movie by this amazing director that i'm looking forward to watching maybe today or tomorrow and i think uh, i've heard in the internet that is amazing as well let me see the name of the director right away mm-hmm. Toshio Matsumoto yeah Toshio Matsumoto and this uh, the actor from this movie who plays this another Katsu uh, Yasuko Sonzo or Katsu Nakamura I think he p- uh, his brother played in this another amazing horror that is like truly a horror movie but consisting of horror stories Kwaiden Kwaiden is another beautiful movie like it comprises of lot of uh, folk japanese horror tales and it blends it into a cinematic experience just like you get so you get so whoever has seen you get so demons is a movie they have to see so since i talk about this first beautiful moment in the movie where uh, our lead guy samurai just closing his arms and looking at just hearing his former lover play this amazing instrument japanese instrument and the sound the way they sing is beautiful as well this is a lonely is melancholy tune i don't know what is it about this uh, this instrument that the geisha plays in the movie or most of the old japanese movie there are like japanese drama black and white geisha uh, instrument but man like since yesterday i have been kind of obsessed with this instrument sami sen yeah it's like a banjo like three string yeah three string instrument now i saw the wiki sami sen like uh, the song that she plays in the movie in devils sura 
by using the submission it's very melancholic i wish they had like included the lyrics right when she sings the song in like translated to english as well but since i was it on youtube hopefully like if there is a dvd or good cut a uh, good version of the movie somewhere maybe they have that translation i mean if you have seen the movie please do comment like if you know what that the lyrics of that song is it's very melancholic like lonely feel kind of song so i think there's deeper meaning in the movie i don't think the director chose that particular song randomly but it's very beautiful most of the time like i have really in all the japanese movie as well i have heard this instrument and like the singing but i wasn't particularly interested but in devils uh, i really like uh, i was really like uh, it is it stayed with me that song and maybe it was due to the vibe in that uh, in that scene so in in that scene after that scene in the movie like very violent stuff starts to take place um, and yeah devils slash sura japanese movie is uh, another thing that i like about the movie mm, is the shots because i was it on night yesterday like at 12 in at night late at night and it became i'm glad i was it i i was it at night because it was more silent and the right when i started the movie it became even more creepy kind of silence and you hear this because it's a vintage movie right it's from the 70s it has that kind of atmosphere especially because it's a japanese old japanese movie and it's like a opera like bergman kind of i think it's like a bergman movie because it questions god the the, the end sort of the movie um, it's like divided into chapters this movie so you know like jack snyder like in recent times in context of recent times jack snyder did that with justice league his jack snyder cut like this chapter this thing that comes and then it plays out the words in the screen so that's how it is right this guy started this guy started i mean obviously it started way long back then, but this thing exists in this movie as well and the last chapter is seven months after the incident i wouldn't try to in spoil the incident for you but it's the climax of the movie and it's fucked up it's very dark heads get cut off people die and at the end <laughs> it's very nice it is the most unique kind of like mm, the use of that chapter wise i don't know what it's called in cinematic language so seven years months later and then none of them exist but they were there there's something that happens in the movie at the last but the end card of the movie is uh, it's um, the movie ends with uh, a focus at the buddha's statue not sure laughing buddha or something related to buddhism and that is very like uh, metaphorical kind of it has kind of uh, uh, it's just like kurosawa's movie where the uh, where the blind uh, guy drops his uh, buddha's sculpture sculpture fuck I, i'm starting to i don't know why but i've been getting worse at remembering movie's name every year What's the name of the movie? It was an amazing movie. I I'm even starting to forget the best movies that I like. But it deals with the nature of God, and it questions whether even if there is God, the state of humans right now in the world is very very pathetic. They are killing each other. Uh, wait wait wait. Let me. I'm watching the movie. Let me see the closest movie that I can find. with devils is by kurosawa himself especially the ending uh, i don't know maybe kurosawa was inspired by this movie the ending of ending sort of this movie mm, that that movie where kurosawa just like took it from shakespeare shakespeare inspired movie fuck that is like the very really amazing movie run yep run
Yeah, Ran. Yes, because this Ran was released in 1985. So I'm pretty sure Kurosawa took some sort of inspiration from Devils. Because the end sort are pretty similar. Because uh, all the circumstances that ha- everything that leads happens in the movie. Because even in one chapter, th- in the screen we can read that um, the world is a sea of blood and hell. I think what the director like really nicely portrayed in this movie is that the world is hell itself. It's like it's worse than hell. The people, the kind of stuffs that these characters do. No man, if I was a director, I wish I could make a movie like this, like so serene atmosphere. Because it's simple, the movie is very, it looks like it's executed very simply, but it's not. Because there are flashbacks in the movie. And, uh, you know, they say like the best movies are timeless, and that's what uh, Devils is. And this movie still feels timeless, the way it's edited. I mean, <sighs> the alternate scenario that the our main lead character thinks inside his head and then that scenario occurs in the movie but he's just thinking about it because he has to make a choice. I know it, it wouldn't make sense if you hadn't seen the movie but li- right when you see the movie it'll start to make sense when I when you just look at it. So yeah, it's very Bergman kind of outlook on life approach like the silence of God kind of in this movie and it's really characters that you feel very sorry for you you know mm, there is also this thin line between good and evil in this movie because the guy the characters you think you first uh, at the start of the movie you start thinking like maybe these are the good guys these are the bad guys but not by the end you'll be like, you start feeling sorry for every one of these characters. And uh, released in 1972. And right after watching this movie, of course, I watch a lot of Kurosawa movies I have been watching for all these years. And then the movies of... Uh, okay. Kurosawa, Kenji Mizoguchi, yeah. Kenji Mizoguchi is the one who directed this amazing movie. Uh, I think Floating Weeds was also directed in Japanese, old Japanese movie. I saw Tokyo Story, that was good. Floating Weeds, and now this Devils. Ugetsu was oh, my all-time favorite. Woman in the Dunes, the guy who made Woman in the Dunes. His movies are just, I think, not just Japanese movie. Uh, if any of the people out there who are into movies or any cinema or those who are getting into movies, uh, not just in terms of Japanese movie, but to watch movies and cinemas as a whole, they have to watch movies of Kurosawa, Kenji Mizoguchi, uh, and uh, the Naked Director. <laughs> yeah, Naked Director is in Netflix. So, yeah, Toshio Matsumoto. Let me just see. There are a lot of awesome Japanese. Japan used to make a lot of good movies back in those days, till the nineties or till the Kurosawa era, I think. Because now, of course, anime is movies as well. I don't really watch a lot of animes, but in terms of just like this sort of movies, this. Uh, but there was another that I recently watched, uh, like a month ago, Air Doll. That was good. Let me see. Doll, yeah. Dunabe plays in this movie. She's a Korean though. Uh, Hirokazu Koridaya. This is also, he's also on my watch list because I just watched one of his movies and I heard in one group that his movies like Soplifters, Nobody Lo- Nobody Knows, Like Father, Like Son, those are amazing and this are so many good movies, so many on the watch list. So many good directors out there, the living, the dead, those who are still to come. So, uh, I don't really have much to say because it's a fresh movie and I still have a lot to like watch the background of this movie. And I still have a lot of movies by this director of this Devils, uh, Toshio Matsumoto. Now I'm really interested in Toshio Matsumoto's movies. And I'm going to watch his another movie called, I think it was uh, 
this among and another uh, what is yeah funeral funeral parade of roses i heard it's kind of like a lgbtq revival kind of transsexual characters and i think it's still living today because it's on imdb they saw that his last movie was for my cor- cor- crossed right eye hopefully it's true hopefully it's true so yeah for me uh, the movies like you get so quiet then sons of the bali was different it was like such a enormous like epic tale of tragedy but yet so beautiful in a way floating with uh, yeah f- the one who directed floating with Floating Weeds is directed by Yasuro Ozo. Oh, fuck. I, I've already forgotten such a big names in there. That's legendary names already. Yasuro Ozo's movies are good. But I haven't watched a lot of was Yasuro Ozo's movies. I was Floating Weeds, mm, Tokyo Story, and this another uh, another amazing movie. I forgot the name of Yasuro Ozo's mm. Late Spring, yeah, yeah, Tokyo Story, Floating Weeds. Uh, I think it was Late Spring, uh, Late Spring Weeks about this uh, a prostitute kind of story. Fuck, so many movies to watch. So yeah, you get so, uh, you get so, and demons quite in are already among my top like uh, Japanese horror or kind of a dark this atmospheric dreamy and this I wish they had like a, a nice blu-ray 4k version of this movie so we could watch it and I'm looking this uh, these are the kind of movie that that's good this is the movie that will stay with you because it's beautiful it's very gory as well like a gore movie you know very flesh and bones and blood but not in the way that you're watching this mm-hmm. such movies like the naked uh, the Serbian flame or that sort of gore it's a different kind of gore you'll see like f- certain hard ranging moments in this movie and fuck man like it's just so good in its own kind of simplicity and this i think this kind of movie don't have lo- I'm really surprised that this movie isn't like on the list of best Japanese movie when you like type it on Google or any sort of film essay. I think there are a lot of film essays about this movie. Two or three I saw. But it's very less. Somebody needs to have that sort of fancy film essays. Some sort of very film student have to make some sort of this film essays regarding this movie. Because they don't even have Wikipedia page of this movie and that's so sad. Because and, and I'm glad that I watched this movie. I came across this. I came across this because of one Instagram page about movies. I just like the sort of the this sort of the movie. They they has that Instagram page. I forgot the name of that Instagram page. Uh, cinematic paintings. Yeah, now I, now I remember. There was this sort of this movie, and this girl is just this gay side is just bleeding. Is a beautiful sort. I think I'll y- use this sort uh, for the thumbnail of this episode. I didn't really talk about the plot properly because I think I want to watch it again. And yesterday p- the plot wasn't the main issue for me. It was I just wa- I just watched this as a viewer yesterday and I'm it was how do you say it was a time well spent. Because it was quality and as a viewer I liked it. I and it's very ghost like very ghost elements as well in this movie and if any of you the listeners uh, even if it's 20 25 listeners out there who have watched this movie and who are really expert or you know people who have watched a lot of movies like demons please do recommend me eh? this movies like you get so obviously i'll find such movies eventually i i still have a lot of Japanese movies on my watch list. Uh, those movies from the 70s, 80s, and of course the Crichton Collection have their own, you know, box set of such movies. So 
thank you guys i just wanted to share you about this movie this awesome movie that i watched yesterday and i think it was suitable to talk about this movie Yes, I, I didn't really go into the physical, uh, philosophical aspects of this movie like the last time when I talked about burning, but I I didn't think I had to because it just I, to sum it up, it just like the movies that so that there isn't hell, the hell is already there, but maybe that's not the point. It's about the cinematic, you know, experience and the way it creates atmosphere, vibe, the tone of the movie is very nice. So it's an amazing. I was a bit drunk yesterday. I saw the movie. I see some movies when I'm drunk as well, but usually I don't remember them or especially if they are worse. But this m- I was just a little bit tipsy. And by the end of the movie I wasn't because I was so focused on this movie. So yeah guys, if you haven't watched the movie, please give it a try. And if you have, please suggest me if you have just like done listening to this my rambling. So thank you guys for listening to this episode of solacencinemas.com. Head over to solacencinemas.com, which is still under construction, but there are some articles that we wrote. Please subscribe to our channel if you think it's worth it or you want to s- you want to hear my further chitter chatter, you know, the stuffs I talk about in the coming episodes. Or like it if you have any sort of you know things you want to share as well. It's an open community platform, so please share your thoughts on the movie or whatever kind of response you have. Thank you guys. Thank you for listening. If you stayed with me for so long in this episode, thank you. Have a great day or night wherever you reside. Thank you. <laughs>